flows. Enlightenment, the endless beginning. The end of ignorance is the beginning of enlightenment. Ignorance has no beginning, but it ends. Enlightenment has a beginning, but it never ends. And both of these become one. They are one. The beginning of enlightenment and the end of ignorance is a single point. Indeed, it is dangerous point with two faces or two sides. One face is looking towards beginningless ignorance and the other face is looking at the beginning of endless enlightenment, the unfathomable enlightenment. So you reach enlightenment, yet you never reach it. You come to it, you drop into it, you become one with it, but is still vast unknown remains and that is the beauty of it and the mystery of it too. If everything was known in, it, in enlightenment, there would be no mystery. If everything becomes known, then the whole thing would become ugly. Then there would be no mystery, everything would be dead. So enlightenment is not knowing in this sense. Also it is not knowing as a suicide. Certainly it is knowing in this sense that it is an opening into greater mysteries, into unfathomable realm of mysteries. Knowing then means that you have known the mystery, you have become aware of the mystery. It is not that you have solved it. You know it is mystery, but it cannot be solved. It is not there like a mathematical formula and everything is known. Rather, the knowing of enlightenment means that you have come to a point where the mystery has become ultimate. Enlightenment is not like a mathematical formula and everything is known. Rather, the knowing of enlightenment means that you have come to a point where mystery has become ultimate and you have known that this is the ultimate mystery. You have known it as a mystery. Now you have become so mysterious that you cannot hope It has, you have known it as a mystery and it has become so mysterious, so deeply mysterious that you cannot hope to solve it. Now you drop all hopes, but it is not despair or a state of hopelessness. It is like understanding the nature of the mystery. Enlightenment is like knowing the mystery, knowing the nature of mystery. The mystery is such that is insoluble and the very effort to solve it is absurd. The mystery is such that any effort to solve it through the intellect is meaningless. 
you have come to the limit of your thinking, your imagination. Now there is no thinking at all, no imagination. And where thinking comes to an end, knowing begins. Where thinking comes to an end, knowing begins. And this is something very different from the knowing of the science and other disciplines or as you have known about this word knowing. The very word science means knowing, but knowing in the sense of making a mystery demystified. Religious knowing means something quite the contrary. Religion is not demystifying the reality. Now all that was known before becomes mysterious again. Even ordinary things about which you were confident that you knew, now even that gate is lost. Everything in a way becomes gateless, endless and unsolvable. Knowing is participating in the exclusive mystery of the existence. This is saying yes to the mysteries of life. The intellect and its theory is not there now. You are face to face with it. It is an existential encounter, not through the mind, but through you, the totality that you are. Now you feel it from everywhere, from your body, from your eyes, from your hands and from your heart. The total being comes to contact with the total mystery. Now you feel it from every corner, from everywhere, from your hands, from your eyes, from your hands, from your body and from your heart. Total being becomes in contact with the total mystery. This is just the beginning, just the beginning. And the end will never be because the end would mean demystifying it. This is the beginning of enlightenment. There is no end to it. But this is the beginning and you live in the beginning. You can conceive of the end of ignorance. Certainly you do. But there will be no end to this enlightened state of the mind. Once you have entered into enlightened, enlightened state of mind, you remain in that and the entire life flows in. Now you have jumped into the bottomless abyss and you rejoice there. You can conceive of it from so many points of view. It comes to this state of mind through Kundalini. It will be an endless flowering. The 1000 petals of the Sahasra or 1000 petal center or crown center do not mean exactly 1000. The 1000 simply means the greatest number. It is symbolic. It is symbolic that it means that the petals of Kundalini that are flowering are endless, uncountable. They will go on opening 
an opening without an end. And it is said, when Subhuti was sitting under the tree, it was not the season of the flower spring, but the flowers showered on him. Infinite number of flowers showered on him. They will go on opening without an end. You will know the first opening. But the last will never be there because there is no limit to it. It is only known when the flowers started showering on Subhuti. But there is a process. It has a beginning but not the end. There is no limit to it. One can come to this point through Kundalini or one can come to this through any other method that does not matter. What really matters, you experience it. It is like going to somewhere. People from different corners of the city go to that place, follow different routes, but the destination remains the same. For some, the route is shorter, for the others it is longer. But everyone ultimately reaches the final destination. Enough for now.